Good morning, colleagues, and welcome. Welcome, Juan Kilekile. We welcome you today for this most auspicious event of a commitment to a profession, to a life of service with humility and integrity. This is not a graduation in which the university um, confers a degree on each of you. Uh, that will happen later, but this is a commitment to a profession. Not all graduates and graduates do this. This is uh, particular to health professions, and so this is a very solemn and auspicious occasion to which we welcome you. This is predominantly the oath-taking ceremony, but together with taking of the oath, we're also going to recognize those students um, who have achieved uh, prizes and medals. And so we have done in each cohort of, of, in each group today, we have recognized the students who have achieved um, so that they can be recognized in amongst their colleagues. And so we'll be doing that early on in the service. We will then be listening to some recorded inputs from our colleagues um, in terms of alumni, from community members and traditional leaders in preparation for you to take the oath. Uh, Prof. Lionel Green-Thompson, the Dean, will then take us through um, a short reflection piece on, on how we should be approaching the oath-taking and then will lead us through the oath. So now we're here. It's been a crazy year, it's been hectic, but you're here. Let's just take a nice deep breath, a moment to just be present where you are now. Sauborne, I see you. I see you who have struggled. I see you who have triumphed. I see you all through the sixth years, six years of toil, through six years of hard work, and you have now arrived at this point. You will be joining together with us as colleagues, as colleague health professionals in the next few weeks as you start internship. We're going to start with a short video clip from uh, Professor Marion Green, Marion Jacobs, who will be um, just sharing with us a few reflections on as, as you prepare to take the oath. Thanks. I'm Marion Jacobs. I was the Dean of this faculty until 2012. I am a public health pediatrician. And next year, I will celebrate my 50th anniversary since my own graduation. At the moment, I'm doing a range of things, including ser serving as the co-chair of the Ministerial Advisory Committee for COVID. And in my spare time, I do other things like uh, dancing the Jerusalem whenever I get a chance, mm -hmm. and also being involved with both Artscape and Animal Welfare Society. Fellow uh, graduates, colleagues that you are going to be very soon, as you're about to take your oath, perhaps you want to reflect on a few things. I think the first thing you want to think about is why you decided to pursue a career as a health professional. And then you would be failing if you didn't think about your journey, your very interesting journey in this Faculty of Health Sciences at UCT. So one of the first things that happened when some of you got here was the Fees Must Fall movement. And what did you learn from that? You probably learned that it's okay to raise your voice. You learned when you have to speak. And I hope you also learned when you need to keep quiet. The second big event was the tragic death of Bongani Mayosi. And that for you must have been a huge learning experience. The best part of it must have been the compassion that you felt for him and his family, for your fellow, uh, for your colleagues, also for your teachers and the people who work in the faculty. And the third, of course, is this dreadful COVID that's hit you now in your final year as you're about to graduate. And there again, if you think back on PBL, which you probably didn't enjoy much, PBL taught you how to learn on your own and how to learn in teams. And that teams thing also came from 
you learning about your fellow students, learning about their challenges, their achievements, their lives outside of medicine, whether they are a star soccer player or a star scrabble player, all of those things. And that must have been a wonderful experience. So as you reflect on your, your last few years in the faculty, you are now preparing to enter the world of work. And this is a huge step, a huge step into a situation of power where you will have the kind of power that's given to very few people. You'll have the power to listen to people's deepest secrets, the power to ask questions of them, the most intimate questions, the power to use your equipment, your drugs, your interventions, some of which may not be so pleasant for your patient. And you can make a choice whether you want to use this power that's given you as a health professional or whether you in fact would prefer to be a healer. A healer that's caring, that's compassionate, a healer that understands the need to listen, a healer that's not scared to hold your patient's hand, to pick up a little baby and to be just kind and normal, a kind, normal human being. And I think as if you practice that kind of healing, you will go into the world that needs that sort of healing now more than ever before. And I'm convinced that you've been prepared for this. Your journey through the faculty, your learnings in this faculty, and your learnings in the world as you move from being a teenager into an ad older adolescent. So what can, how can I wish you? I want to quote uh, somebody for whom I have great respect, and that's Dr. Seuss. And he talks about, oh, the places you'll go. So with apologies, I'm going to read what he says. He says, you're off to great places. You're off and away. You've brains in your head. You have shoes in your feet, uh, feet in your shoes, rather. You can steer yourself any way that you choose. But when you're alone, there's a very good chance in the night, in the woods, when you're all alone, that you'll meet the next thing that, that, will, that you'll meet will scare you out of your pants. Step with great care and great tact. Remember that life is a balancing act. So I want to leave you with that, that you must remember that you can't just focus on being in the woods and with your patients all the time. You must have a life, because having that life enables you to be a better person when you're caring for those whose health is in your hands. So congratulations, you're off and away. So just a few words of, uh, of reflection. We're now going to do the prize giving. And we're going to ask the prize winners who are here in this particular ceremony to stand um, so that we can, we can applaud for you. And uh, the dean will be coming up to you to, to hand your prize in the, in the spaces between the rows. So can we ask um, Charlie Theory to, to stand? Charlie, Charlie has won the Anesthesia Prize, the final year MBCHB student with the highest overall aggregate in anesthesia, based on their combined performance in the fourth and sixth year block of anesthesia and examinations weighted equally. Congratulations. <laughs> Stay standing. Stay standing. Congratulations. And then can we ask Ben Philpott to stand, please? <laughs> Congratulations, Ben. You have been awarded the Family Practice Primary Healthcare Prize uh, jointly with uh, Josh Fegan for the best student in final year MBCHB Primary Healthcare. Hearty congratulations.
We're now going to, uh, in further preparation for our um, for taking the oath, we're going to watch a few more colleagues who are going to be sharing some uh, of their thoughts with you. So just be present, listen, prepare your minds, be present, and reflect together with them. Thank you. So I remember when I took my oath, um, I was overwhelmed with a feeling of relief and accomplishment and pride. Um, and the words made perfect sense, but it's only with experience that the words actually take some meaning um, and really come to life. As you are taking this oath today, remember, oath is about empathy, professionalism, and care. If you've got those three, you are a winner. Also, oath is about humanity, responsibility of both provider and receiver. On reflection, the very first line stands out to me, which is, I pledge to serve. And so we always need to remember that we are in service of people, not of ourselves, um, not of money, not of status or societal stereotypes. And we need to serve with integrity and humility. I really think it's important to actually reflect on um, the privilege that it is to be a health professional. So many people are trying to apply to get into one of the um, disciplines at the at UCT and for me you know it's a massive privilege to actually be sitting here today or to, for me to have earned my degree as a physiotherapist and I think we always have to remember that that is a privilege to actually be helping someone through a really difficult time that it involves one of the most important aspects of their life their health. One of the commitment that you'll make is that of lifelong learning. The commitment to lifelong learning means using the current period that we're going through as an example is that you see that there's a rapid change in new knowledge, new diseases and new health challenges. And as a health professional, you must always be at the forefront of research, information, new technology to be able to respond appropriately. When you come into the health system, you may often feel that you can't change much. As a group of interns, we were able to notice that one of our wards in a rural hospital really needed touch-ups. It was a children's ward that was quite plain, but we worked together with local businesses, with colleagues, to ensure that we transformed it into a child-friendly ward. This does illustrate that coming with new eyes, you would and are able to change things for the better within the health system. Working with an underprivileged team and providing the coaches with skills or the athletes with skills to enhance their abilities is amazing. And I think that's the important thing within South Africa is that yes, we might not have the resources for every team might not be equal and every hospital might not be equal, but we have so much skill and knowledge as health professionals that it's so easy to actually teach another person. As a health professional in South Africa and given the inequalities in our societies, I think it's particularly important for health professionals to be mindful of those inequalities, to do their bits in terms of addressing those inequalities. And that will require us working not only across our disciplines in, in, you know, in the health professions, but with other sectors, working intersectorally to make sure that we address the challenges of our societies in a comprehensive manner. So the oath has guided my daily practice and I noticed this in my second month of internship when one of the matrons came to me and asked which university do I come from. Um, so I thought I did something wrong and you know said UCT. But what transpired actually has stuck with me for many months. Um, so she noticed that there was something different in the way in which I interacted with the nurses, the porters, the patient, and she really wanted to compliment that. Um, that was surprising because I thought I was doing what you should be doing, uh, but she had noticed that as something extraordinary. So many of you will get into the service and think you're doing the normal, but that turns out to be the extraordinary because of the type of education you've received and the type of training that you've received. And one needs to embrace the good times, but learn from the difficult times and also look after yourselves amidst all of that and recognize that you have immense power as a healthcare professional to be a voice for your patients, um, to uphold their human rights, to serve them, and as cliched as it may sound, to make the world a better place. 
it is very important that the student must reflect on their work that they are doing within our communities, especially the marginalized community and vulnerable one. We need to hear the voices of our gogos, meaning our elderly people who are always standing in those queue at the clinic. We need to hear the voices of our own sisters who are uh, domestic violence abuse. Go out there and be advocates for a change. My message to students is to always remember what a resilient group they are. They are the group that saw the Fees Must Fall movement. They have just survived a pandemic. These are graduates who are going to be able to change the face of South Africa, the face of the health system in the country. And I think whenever it gets tough, every single graduate should remember that they have gone through the most and they will still survive. I really do feel that these challenges have made the class more resilient, more mature and more capable. And I really look forward um, to this new generation of more socially responsive and compassionate healthcare professionals. To the class of 2020, uh, you deserve a massive congratulations. To you, I say that you've conquered, you've made it this far, and I know that South Africa is going to be a better place because of you. Go well and make us proud. Congratulations on a remarkable achievement under extremely difficult circumstances. Um, I have true confidence um, that you will be fantastic healthcare professionals um, for the communities that you work for. I wish you every joy and success as you embark on this noble and rewarding profession. Um, much love. God bless. I would like to congratulate you for a journey well traveled. You have really surmounted many challenges and we look forward to welcoming you into the health system. A good luck for your future and be the lamp. Wherever you go, shine. City is a cause. Ndinga ndaga. Baba uvula mapiko uwatweze. Meaning, fly eagle, fly higher and spread the wings. All the best to you. Halala and goes. Salvon. I'm really quite struck that, in fact, not a single group has responded with Salbona when I've said Salbona, and it's very unusual to me. Um, We'll have to do an additional training. <laughs> Saubona. Saubona. Mangiti Saubona, in Kunuguti Namshanja Guti, in Yakpega Gashi, Namshanja Mandela. Sitrialo Guti Saubona, but as Pega Bant, Sinkulanji. So today, my saying of Saubona, I see you, is a particular moment because I want to say to you today in a particular way that the faculty sees you. Your journeys may have been different, and the experiences of being seen may have been varied completely across your experience. So today, in that spirit of Saubon, I want to introduce a video that we've taken of a ceremony we did on the campus yesterday afternoon. So we had hoped that we would have a bigger ceremony than this, and we would bring in the traditional people of this space. So the very first nations of, of South Africa are the Khoi Khoi who resided in this, in this place, what they call the delta of the uh, Lisbeck River and the Black uh, River down the bottom here. But importantly for me in the reflections that we've had with them, and I've had a huge amount of learnings over the last couple of days spent with these traditional healers from that group, is the notion that this place for them, I'm gonna forget the name, Khoi Lona, which is the name they have for observatory. It is the place of the stars. And in many ways, you begin to be part of that firmament of stars that emerge from this observatory space. But they also mentioned an, a note about the fact that the mountain was a mountain of healing. Hurikwaha uh, is their mountain of healing. And so from this very land, they were healers too. And so they came onto the campus yesterday to do a cleansing ceremony to acknowledge that, for us to acknowledge that, 
and for them really to give thanks that we've managed the year. And I, I thought it was a really powerful ceremony, which we'll show you now. But the second thing that they did is, is they marked some of the faculty members in that ceremony, essentially marking you, that you go out of this valley of healing or these, these mountains of healing in this area into the various spaces where you work. And we do hope that everybody did get jobs on Friday uh, and that that's all done now. Uh, please let us know if that's not the case. But the key thing here is what we want to, to mark, and that's part of the way we've constructed today's celebration, is that we wanted the voices of ordinary people to be heard in these celebrations. Because today is less about your achievement, it's far more about the promise that you make. And that's the point of an oath, is that you promise to do something differently. So we'll just show you the video from the ceremony uh, yesterday, and then I'll say a few things. <laughs> Uh, the lifting of the horns ceremony is it is a convocation with the ancestors today. The health science faculty, we are relying on you to be a shield over the nation, to protect them with your wisdom, with your knowledge. Give life to the young, secure the health of the old. Help those that are need of your healing, your knowledge. See that eating. How far then? Sukwatse. Abotse, see that round eating. Father of our four people. Abotse, Haire. Father, bless the teachers and students. See how my owl. In Sida. So we can strengthen us. Let the name of the ancestors be honored and respected. Please pay attention. Education is important. Protect. Thank you very much. Blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so that ceremony represents for us as a faculty the beginning of a conversation, the beginning of recognizing the different voices which form a part of our heritage and the voices that we will encounter going forward. So, Sawana, I see you in the naive young matriculant who traveled to Cape Town from far and wide, quite uncertain of what lay ahead. For some of you, the journey to the school was expected as part of your heritage, but for others, it was the first time that anybody in your family might have gone to university. Saubo, now I see in you the mixed encounters of your learning that you have experienced over these last years. Encounters that filled you with a knowing, but often came with much pain before the glory. But encounters which I have hoped most deeply will make you more than the sum of the facts you have accumulated over this journey. Because if we, if we haven't done that, then we have failed. Saubona, I see you in this fulfillment today of the promises that was started when your parents named you so many years ago. I see in you the promise emerging of how your village, however you construct your village to be, began to see that you learned things quicker than other people in your group. And so you've ended up in this faculty. Saubona, I see you 
as a reflection of who we are as a faculty. These last years have been a storm which have raged against the very foundation of who we are. You and this class in particular have walked through that storm in a way that we can't begin to understand. But you now take your place in that very rich tapestry which is the legacy of the Faculty of Health Sciences at UCT. Your names are forever etched in our story as we trust that our story is completely written in your hearts. And amongst you today are faculty members and we've asked them to sit amongst you because in fact some of you will be aware that I call you colleagues from my first encounter with you. Because whether you're a first year or a final year, you remain my colleagues. The only difference is that I've been doing this a couple of years more than you, maybe more than a couple. But it is this idea that you join a community at the very beginning and your professionalism should change over time. You're a different kind of professional today to the one who came at the beginning. In 10 years time, you must be a different professional to the one who leaves UCT today. And in 20 years time, you must be a greater professional than my generation is today because you have to do things differently to our generation if we're going to make a difference in the world. Saubona, I see you who emerge at this point, this confluence of our legacy and our promise as UCT to make the nation healthier. You today will be, begin the journey of becoming the epitome of our commitment as a faculty to the people of South Africa. We're always ho hoping that nobody goes abroad, but that's the way it is. But your promise, colleagues, is about to play itself out in the context of many competing pandemics. The ongoing gender-based violence in South Africa, that pandemic will soon be a regular part of your work. And it will rely on you individually to make your encounter with patients more important than your frustration with the system. Because the system will frustrate you. And I'm not saying wish the frustrations away at all. I'm saying recognize those frustrations. But know, too, that for the patient who's been in the queue for four hours, you may be the only encounter with dignity they have that day. Make it count. In whatever frustration you have with the drunken man, with the abused woman who's coming for the third time, with the child who ran away from home, just make their encounter with you an encounter of dignity because that will change their experience of life. Your colleagues in their, in their article earlier this, this, this year in, in the Daily Maverick, a group of your colleagues, uh, Majid Bowden, Kamua, and Salduka wrote, a piece on social justice for health professions, and they were addressing students particularly. They spoke of this need for occupational consciousness, the idea that in our working we're becoming more conscious. But they go on to say, they use that, that model, that in our everyday doing, in the everyday things that we do just in jail as part of our lives, those things, through those things, we're able to resist and oppose ideas and systems that oppress our communities. So be mindful today as you emerge from this with a sense of privilege, because it is a privilege. But you will be endowed with an inordinate level of power. You will have the power to instruct an 82-year-old woman to strip down to her underwear. Nobody else will be given that power but health professionals. And it is a power that is given to you beyond your years. Some of you are more mature than others, but it is not a power that we give lightly or that that very woman of 82 years old gives to a young man or young woman who is but 25. Be mindful of your power, but don't allow it to be paralyze you. Don't allow it to paralyze you in the same way that you shouldn't allow it to to, to fill you with the sense of, of, of awe and, 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 and arrogance. In the study I did amongst final years for my PhD, one of the candidates says, but I've earned my arrogance. I've studied hard, this has been tough. I've earned my arrogance. And I said, walk lightly on this earth, you know. Um, 
even though the work was hard, it doesn't give us powers beyond that, the, the power that people give us. But in reflecting on these pandemics today, I'm mindful that we, you take this oath on World AIDS Day because this pandemic of AIDS is perhaps our best example of the journey from the shadows into the light, of the journey from um, alienation and stigma into the acceptance so that it forms the lexicon of your regular learning. But it is that conversion of, of, of great tragedy into the promise which becomes an aspiration. But you today are emerging as well in a time of the COVID pandemic. I can't begin to imagine what it must be like for you coming into a health system that's creaking at the seams as you're watching those numbers rise and you will almost certainly encounter it at the, at the eye of the storm on the 1st of January. I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like. But what I am convinced of, though, is that if we take care in our social spaces, um, and it was an interesting thing earlier, trying to separate the students from each other, because nobody seemed to heed the call to at least stand a little bit apart. My conviction that even in managing this, we will make more impact on the pandemic as interns in our social lives than we will at work. And we are far more likely to get the, the virus in our social engagements than we're likely to do at work. But today's oath-taking ceremony marks this translation of legacy of the health professions into the promise to the people you, you, you will still encounter in their most serious vulnerability. And it is a time for us as professionals together today to look back at Hippocrates and reflect about a time in which professionalism was emerging amongst a community who knew probably one millionth of what we know now, and yet recognized, I mean, some of you may have read the, the book Cutting for Stone. If you haven't, you should read it between now and the time your internship starts. But the book is named for the part of the Hippocratic Oath which says, and do not cut for stone. And cutting for stone was regarded as a futile procedure in those communities, because everybody who was cut for stone uh, I think it's a version of a, of a kind of renal stone. Uh, anybody who, was, who had an operation for that essentially died. So it was inappropriate. But it is about converting those ancient languages into a language of modern times that your learning will bring to those people you encounter in their need, moment of care. I can't emphasize enough the moment of dignity the patient will experience with you. But what I am going to say to you today is that in as much as the oath asks you to make a promise to communities and to the people you serve, remember to take care of yourself. It is part of the professional behavior to look after yourself. Because what the, what the oath, the original oath says is be aware of your limitations and seek the help of those who are wiser than you. Um, because that's part of the way we take care of ourselves. And so, colleagues, we come to the point of taking the oath. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand, and the, the faculty members who are here will stand with you. And you'll see that there's no name on the document, so I'm going to, when I, so you'll say after me, and I will say I, and I'll say my name. Um, and then you will repeat after me, and we'll go, I'll go line for line through the pledge. And I want you to, to hear yourself as you make this promise, because the people that you make the promise to are not here. Usually they are reflected in the different parents who gather for a ceremony like this, but they're not here. And so we've tried to give you some images of what those people look like. I, Lionel Green Thompson. Say your own name. Sorry, say your own name. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's the part I wasn't clear about. Okay, let's give it a try. I, Lionel Green Thompson. I solemnly pledge to serve humanity. My most important considerations will be the health of patients and the health of their communities. I will not permit considerations of age, gender, race, religion, ethnic origin, 
sexual orientation, disease, disability, or any other factor to adversely affect the care I give to patients. I I will uphold human rights and civil liberties to advance health, even under threat. I will uphold human rights and civil liberties to advance health, even under threat. I will engage patients and colleagues as partners in health care. I will engage patients and colleagues as partners in health care. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. I will respect the confidentiality of patients, present or past, living or deceased. I will respect the confidentiality of patients, present or past, living or deceased. I will value research and will be guided in its conduct by the highest ethical standards. I commit myself to lifelong learning. I commit myself to lifelong learning. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I give yourselves a hand. At the end of the document, there's a space for you to sign your name. I ask that you take a seat now and just spend a moment or two just thinking about what signing this document means. And then keep it with you as you go into your professional life. Always remembering that you're a part of us now, but as you leave, you're the promise we're making to South Africans all across the country. So thank you very much. Congratulations, colleagues. As you sign, we're just going to wish you strength and courage as you forge the path ahead. May you listen with compassion, walk with humility, and act with justice. <laughs>